Walking the Black Love Matters with this service at the therapy session for figuring out it all hood. Loving each other. I'll find Ernie Brock and Michelle. Or Jay Z and Beyonce. Who is you? I'm Nero. And I'm Nyambi. And this is episode 376, y'all. Hey, happy Barack Obama Day. Be sure to leave one, two, three, four, five star rating review on Apple Podcasts and don't sit here and follow us on all forms of social media at Black Love Matters as Black with no K. What's going on, baby? As I said, I'm glad it's Barack Obama Day, a.k.a. President's Day. Usually, I, this is not a holiday that I big up or even announce, but I am just so grateful to be off work. Um, I'll take it. One of the many perks of being a cubicle warrior, you get all these bank holidays off that um, I gladly take. And we gladly have these long weekends. But, you know, since it's President's Day, I do acknowledge Barack Obama as my president. So, in actuality, it's his day. And I am um, taking the time to... Reflect on his works. I actually, from Target, they had a book with all of his speeches in there from when he first became a senator until his um, last term in um, his presidency. Mm -hmm. So what I think I'm actually going to do is read maybe a speech or two from there. Because I usually don't do any type of ritual or anything on President's Day. Oh, I thought you were going to read one on the podcast. Oh, well, no, no, no. You know, Barack Obama's speeches be 20 minutes. (laughs) I don't think he's not a quicker. He's not quick. Like, no shade. No no shade. No shade to Obezi. But I don't think I've seen him giving a speech that's less than ten minutes. Uh, facts. And so no, no, we don't got time um, to oh. read it on air. Maybe I should have had a favorite quote or something, mm-hmm. but nah. So I'm gonna do that um, just to take time out. And actually, I love the book. They had the book at Target for like spotlighted for Black History Month, and I'm like, oh. That's true. Like, I think we also have a book of like Malcolm X speeches or some, it was MLK speeches. Somebody else speeches. We have a book of speeches. And mm-hmm. at first I was like, mm, is this beneficial? But it do be beneficial when you go back and look at it. I think even especially after this weekend, y'all know we're going to talk about the Black Messiah and the, and the Judas and all of them. Just all the speeches that was gave in that era, just to have that transcription of them. Mm-hmm. It's lessons in that, right? And it's just, I don't know, it's like a warm hug to read some of those things sometimes. So I do think later on today I might peek in and maybe find one from when he was a senator, so nice and green and bright eye and bushy tail to maybe I'll find maybe his last, like, State of the Union or something to see what he said uh, as he was moving forward in it. Gotcha. Um, but also this past weekend, good, too fast. I, I think I seen a meme on Instagram where they was like, weekends is feeling real lunch breakish. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, is that what it is? Like, Ooh, it shit. is like the weekend is like a 30 minute lunch break. And mm-hmm. it's just like, we back. I, it was, don't get me wrong, y'all. I know it wasn't too long ago. We'd be like, Lord, it was Saturday for 14 days. And honestly, I wanted to get to Monday so I had some routine and normalcy in my life. So, yes, for whatever reasons, the tables have turned and weekends only take 10 minutes. (laughs) And on this weekend, I found a couple things that I really that sparked joy for me. So on Amazon, y'all, it's something called the Flack, F-L-A-C-K, and her name is Anna Pequin, I think it is. It's the it's the woman who used to play in True Blood as Suki. Oh, yeah, Suki from Suki True Blood. In it, and also Gina Torres, hello. She's in it, and it's bomb. It reminds me of, I was going to say Scandal, but it's not as political as Sam Scandal. It gives you the energy of Olivia Pope. Um, if you like Scandal the earlier years when Olivia Pope just went around fixing people problems, You'll like this show. Oh, yeah. That's literally the purpose of the show. So it's set in London, I want to say. And it's basically this PR firm that goes around and fits his people's shit. And they go around and fit celebrities or high profiles. Like when they just get into bullshit, they just pull them out of it. Mm-hmm. But it's never just a normal. Like, of course, it'd be like, yeah, you fucking a bitch. Da, 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 da. But it's always like a tweak to it. Right. Like it's always something really, really wonky going on to it. So you go on this adventure as they're solving a case. And then Suki, on the other hand, her life is on 10, 10 1000. Right, it like is. she is going, like her mother committed suicide. She probably got a um a drug problem, cocaine white. Near, I'm gonna talk about that. <laughs> uh, did y'all watch Buried with um Buried by the Bernards? Near, you gonna talk about them? Yes. Okay, ma'am. so Buried with the Bernards. That's why I'm talking about cocaine white. Anyway, she do that white girl, and it's just super interesting. It's fast. It's a quick watch. I'm enjoying it. Um, it's witty. It got that um English dry humor that I like a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is, like I said, if you liked scandal, the early years where they were just solving cases and things of that nature, you will enjoy the flack. It's, it's just, it's white people. They actually are a little bit more inclusive. Cause at first I was like, you know, cause I was watching Judas and the Messiah. I was like, I don't know if I can just watch all these white people. <sighs> 
just on television. <laughs> but they have enough diverse cast where I'm just like, okay, I can I can process this. I can breathe this in. Um, other things that I'm thinking about. Oh, WandaVision, y'all. WandaVision is serving. Every Friday, I watch WandaVision before I go to work on Friday. I be trying to stay up that Thursday before at midnight, but I never do. Or like 9 p.m. because I end up doing something. Mm -hmm. But every Friday morning, it's become a neomanized ritual to watch WandaVision before we like go off and do our work. Again, for you Negroes who don't know, WandaVision pits off where the Avengers Part 2 picked up at, um, left off at. Mm -hmm. So we got Wanda Madkoff. We got Vision coming up in here. Wanda done created her whole ass new universe. And it is so freaking good. Like every week, whatever it leaves, what's, what comes up, what is it called? Please stand by yeah. comes too fucking quick. Like please stand by always comes when my mouth is fucking open. Yeah, it'd be like, what the fuck? And then when the please stand by, come on, I just be looking at the screen. I'm like, so y'all ain't gonna give me no scenes. No, nothing. No previews. Ain't no after show. It's probably a podcast. I probably should look for a podcast. Ain't no podcast to help me unpack this. Because this the episodes are literally anywhere between 25 and 40 minutes. And they're jam-packed. No fluff. I know the first couple episodes were a little drier, but they still were filled with little Easter yeah, eggs. Especially when you under, when shit started to unpack by, I want to say episode two or three. I think it's three is when it started hitting the fan. When shit started to unpack, you'd be like, oh. That's why they play, or even like the commercials, they like play these commercials while the show was going on. Mm -hmm. Like even the commercials speak to something. Yes. And if you don't pick up on those Easter eggs, you're just like, what are they talking about? So much so, I got to go on YouTube and get an explainer or some of the shit. I go, think oh, I head. actually when the season was over, I was thinking about going back and like rewatching it because that's what we're doing with Servant, y'all. Servant's back, but Servant's heavy. We're waiting for Servant to finish. And once Servant's finished, we're going to go through and watch it all together. But oh, if I forgot you, we stopped watching that for a minute. Yeah, we're going to stop watching until we can just watch it back to back. But WandaVision! WandaVision gets me excited for superhero movies again. It does. Because it was a point where I was not excited about superhero movies. Because they did them so fast and it was so. They just didn't have no, like, it was just like Michael Bay. No it shade to him. He's a legend. It didn't but have boom, any boom. soul to it. Yeah, you, that's what I mean by Michael Bay. Like, if you go see a Michael Bay movie, your shit's going to be blown up. You're going to see camera, camera angles you ain't never seen. People going to be flipping, but it ain't going to be no content. No. It ain't going to be no plot. It's just going to be men running around. Right. And, and you'll, like, you know, you'll see like Tyrese yelling or some shit. Somebody like, popping up and somebody ooh, ooh, saving some somebody. Like yeah. And yeah. it's just like, that looked great, but I'm not sure what that was about. And I think that's what superhero movies are getting to. But WandaVision brings it back to me. They're like, oh, wait, there's truly a plot here. Mm -hmm. Not only are the aliens or whoever the X going to take over the world, but the person, the villain has a, a backstory, if you know right. what I mean. Like right. the villain is not doing this for shits and giggles. The villain has a rhyme and a reason and a purpose to be doing it. And like you go on this whole journey. And that's what I appreciate. Like same with Wanda. Like because she allegedly air quote was probably the bad guy in this. But it's like, yeah, you kind of killed her man and her brother. And right. I can see why she's mad. Mm -hmm. I can see why she was like, leave me alone. This is my sovereign territory. She's acting like the people in the Appalachia. <laughs> you know, the people in the Appalachia who claim sovereign territory. Yes. That's what WandaVision did. She said, this is my land. We ain't a part of the United States. Don't this you this, fuck this with Wanda us. land, honey. <laughs> I'm the president, the Pope, and the mayor. <laughs> Last thing that brought me joy. Y'all see Meghan Markle and, um, and Harry, they having another baby. Okay. They expecting baby number two. So let me put respect on their name. Duke and Duchess of Sussex made the announcement on Sunday saying they are due to have a second child together. Although they didn't reveal how far along Megan was or the, the, the gender of the, the child, they put up some nice fraternity, um, fraternity, paternity shoots oh. um, and maternity shoots. And they was looking cute. Okay. I stand for her. She's living her life. They've disconnected from are they the monarchy. Still the Duke and Duchess. Can we really call them that by title? They are. I think they're always going to be that, but I think they're not taking like money from the monarchy so therefore they're not obligated to do all the events mm -hmm. right so they couldn't take the money and be like we about to go live over here right they have to like i'm not they still get the title but they're mm -hmm. just not taking the money and stuff gotcha always trying to strip titles from black women we're gonna talk about that you're gonna talk about black women yeah we're gonna talk about in our integrity black, and believing in black women in our integrity y'all better not <laughs> nero okay <laughs> But you better still believe black women. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute. Listen, it's multiple sides to the story. We've just heard her side and they side. The truth somewhere in the middle. Oh, okay. Come on. I got some joy. Happy claps. <laughs> 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 He's not going to stop. 
So peep this shit out. I just want to put y'all put y'all shit out. Put the shit out there. What? So your boy submitted his book proposal to his agent, right? Yes. yes. When was it? Friday. Uh-huh. My agent was like, "Hey, just sent out the emails on Thursday." Yeah. She, I think she sent me an email on Friday at nine a.m. Here's the list of publishing houses that um, I've sent it to, just to give you a heads up. And I'll let you know. You know, Monday's a holiday, so we probably won't hear anything. Yep. But I just want to let you know who we sent it to. Whenever I hear something, I'll let you know. Mm-hmm. At eleven o'clock, look at God. She was like, "Hey, mm. just heard back from publisher X, Y, and Z. Ooh. They said, hey." I want to buy this book, but I'm be out of town because of the holiday. Mm-hmm. But the week afterwards, I want to have a meeting. Don't preempt the book, which I don't even know what the hell preempt means. So I had to go look it up and then ask her, like, what does preempt mean? Yeah, so preempt, I think I already did it. Look. <laughs> so preempt, pre, uh, you know, when publisher preempt the book, they pretty much it's like giving you a big ass offer that you can't refuse yeah. to take it off the market. Yeah. And, and then it also comes with like a, an exploding offer. So it'd be like. We'll yeah, give near on, hours, yeah. you know, 200,000 for this book, but you got to respond in three hours. Yeah. So there was like, don't let nobody preempt this book. So I'm like, all right, cool. So celebrating that, like, ooh, got somebody who interested in the book. Because all you need is one yes. So that was at 11. Mm-hmm. At 12, yeah. she was like, oh, by the way, So-and-so. another publisher from one of the larger publishing houses, like one of the largest publishing houses, is interested in your book. My God. Celebrating again. They was like, don't let them preempt it. I said, oh, okay. By three, mm-hmm. she done sent me two more responses. Mm. Two, two more responses. Two more responses. That said, hey, hey, this book here, this proposal, it's fire. We like it. We like it. So I got potentially four publishers. Wow. Who want my shit? So, you know, that's exciting because books, you know, of course, you know, you can get a, a publisher and things like that. Sort, but when you got like a machine, a, a, a not even machine, but when you have a bidding war uh-huh. between like the machines and everybody else, like the price of the brick goes up. Yep. You know, just like Bitcoin. Oh, let's not talk about that. The price <laughs> of the brick goes up. Yeah. So I got like. Not this week, not this, not this week, but next week. I got about four meetings right now wow. that's on the calendar to talk to some publishers mm-hmm. about my book. That sounds like a Christmas day blessing to me. No! It sounds like a shot on the to me. I mean, for y'all, the old school listeners, you know about them Christmas day blessings mm-hmm. where, you know, the Lord just give you the gifts, right? Like right. imagine it's Christmas day. And, and you come down and you see the presents and you be like, oh, thank you, mom. Oh, this is so good. Thank you. I've been wanting the Polly Pocket and I've been wanting the um, Care Bears. And and then after that, your mama sit back and drink a sip of coffee and mm-hmm. say, go outside. And you say, it's cold, mama. What I'm going outside <laughs> for? And she said, go outside. And then you see something major with a big red bow on it. Mm-hmm. And you just break out into a bath to fit. That, that's what's happening Look. now. <laughs> that's what a christmas day blessing is and what you need to ask that's yourself for me, mama. what you need to ask yourself is you still praising for what's under the tree that's for me mama have you even got to what's outside yet is that for me mama Child, y'all better use your praise as your weapon you better be connected to you and um the maker of your universe and send all the good energy so it, and stay ready so you don't have to get ready hey so it's pretty it's pretty exciting it's like wonderful. it's it, it's it's very exciting because like I've been working on this book proposal for off your whole life. A for my whole <laughs> life, but but consciously since like October. So like mm-hmm. end of what was it, Halloween somewhere around there. Yeah, me and Mabel ain't really seen near them since then. Because I've been working on this book proposal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This bitch is about fifty pages long, you know, and all this other stuff, you know, sending it back and forth, still working my day job, doing all this other stuff in between. Trying right? to walk Mabel. Trying to trying to do all of this. Mm-hmm. And be like, man, you know, I was at the point it's like when I even sent it to um, my agent, I was like, yo, like, what's that quote that they say about art? Like art is like art is never done. It's just simply abandoned. Oh. I was like, you know, you creatives are <laughs> you creatives are a lot. That's how I know I'm not one. You creatives. Are, it's done. Hit submit. <laughs> 
Y'all are alive. Because we was going back and forth on the last <laughs> little things. So I just sent her the quote like, art is never done, is never done, it's simply abandoned. What'd she like, say? And I was like, I don't know if Boy, I'm abandoning. if you ab- don't hand over the. This, I said, I don't knock. know if I'm abandoning this, this book proposal, but I'm tired of looking at it. I'm tired of working on it, and I need, I need to. I need to be away from it. Yeah. And she's like, this is perfect. I'm going to do what I need. I'm going to uh, put everything together to send it out. Yeah. So it's been sent out. I got meetings. You know, I asked her, like, should I have a champagne, the bubbly on ice? Not yet. Or the, Not or the, to crown, the ink dry. Or the crown roll on ice. She's Not like, to the ink dry. She's like, don't get it on ice yet. Yeah. But it's something to it's something to say, like, you that it bodes well. You like. That within... 48 hours, not even 48 hours, like 24 hours of like her sending the proposal out to all of these houses. Four of them got back and said, hey, we want to have a meeting to discuss this book. Well, and go from there. Niram tells us the celebration is in the journey. It, it, so, it is. Just completing it. Even if this is as far as we go, mm-hmm. everybody can't say they've done that. Right. So. Congratulations. Yeah. This has already been friends. It's like, hey, man, I know you finished that book proposal. Can you send that here? Mm-hmm. And I was like, once it's sold, once it's sold, I'll send it to you. I can't give it to you right now. Can't give it to you until it's sold. Yeah. yeah once it's sold, I can give it to you. So yeah, it, it, I think it is something about celebrating the application of it, of saying the like, hey. The doing it, right? I did this shit. Yeah. I don't know what the hell I was doing. I looked at a lot of YouTube videos. Yeah. I looked at a lot of uh, other people's book proposals. You know, I've talked to a lot of people. Shout out mm-hmm. to uh, Nia. We had about a good four or five hour conversation mm-hmm. about the book, you know, uh, and the proposal. Like, so just working on all of that. Like, yes, it is a celebration and all that. And I think for, you know, A, you have to celebrate that, but also just continue to celebrate these small wins. Be like, yes. shit, four of, them want, four of them want to talk to me? Mm-hmm. And two of them is a part of the big five? Yep. Fuck. Yep. This is promising. Some, so, something's moving something's and just, moving and just um surrender yourself right to whatever that something may be and continue to be steadfast on the journey exactly hey i'm ready to get this book sold so i can start on the black love matters story Come on. listen i got a story we got a story which one they want to hear shit you know you which sell one them? i got story you got stories yeah. our friends got what mm-hmm. story and if y'all think y'all reading these stories on these new york times y'all ain't heard shit y'all yet. ain't heard a goddamn thing <laughs> We'll give you a story. Well, you know, we'll give you a page turner. What she said was <laughs> that you know, um, the the when, once you sign the deal, like the publisher automatically puts in there they have first right for a refusal of your second book. Yeah. So you can't have a New York Times bestseller and then go somewhere else. Yeah. They'd I mean, like, no. I just need somebody to. So they'll yeah. get you the first first right for refusal. Yeah. So it kind of it kind of puts you in it. What she told me it's a, it's a plus and a minus because if your book didn't do that well. And then they you can, go to another publisher. They they like, they they looking like, well, why are you going to them? Why you ain't stay with the other one? Shit like that. Yeah. So it's you, interesting. Now you 14 years on the road. Yeah. Stay in the present. Yeah. Stay in the present. So, Celebrate. So that's for anybody else who's listening. If you want a journey to something, if you're creating something, if you are got some goals, like take a moment, pause. Where are you at on the journey? And celebrate that for just one second. I mm-hmm. think it'd be super um, beneficial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, got that going on. Buried by Bernards. Y'all need to add this to the bingeables. Yes. The this feel shit good here, bingeables. This is a feel good. I think Nayambi talked about it last week. I told you I was getting excited for it because I seen the previews. We getting excited about it. We've seen the previews. The shit that came out, we done binged it over the weekend. Buried by the freaking Bernards. And if you listen to that, can we highlight them? They got to have Instagram presence. I hope so. Like we, you have to let them know that we're literally standing for them. We are. Like, is it too? Have we missed the train already? Can we get them on the podcast? Like, can we? Uh, maybe I don't know. We can try. Like, can we interview them? Because <laughs> have you seen them with any interviews? No. Well, where where are they, Jen Reagan? This is from Oprah Mag. Yeah, well, where are they now? Shit, I'm assuming Reagan at school and Dej. Um, yeah, Reagan at school and Deja raising up two kids children playing her mm-hmm. wedding. I already know. Since I know they don't watch the show. Go ahead. Finish now. What are you going to talk about the Barry by Bernard? So, Barry by Bernard's is a Netflix uh, reality uh, show that follows a Memphis family who owns a funeral home. So, they black as ever. They black, black, they, y'all. They civil rights black. Civil rights black. Civil and, rights southern black. And they country. And they country. Country and Southern. Southern and country, two different yes. days. They're Southern and country. They're Southern and country. 
the son, uh, is his name Raymond Ray? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Man, what is his name? Because it's based. It's Tatum. Who is Tatum O'Neal Daddy? Ryan. <laughs> Ryan. Whoever, whoever Tatum yeah, O'Neal da- Daddy is, that's who he named off of. Because Mama said she wanted to name him Tatum, but it came out as a boy, and so she ain't want to name the boy Tatum. So she seen who Tatum Daddy was. So it's based off of our Bernard Funeral Services. And this is a circle around Ryan Bernard, which is who's the owner of it. So he went in business with his mother, um, uh, Debbie, to create this funeral home service because it's like there's not many there's not many black ones in uh, Memphis, and um, good money. It's good money, it's and it's something community. that can last, yep. you know, for a very long time. Yep. So he was like, I personally didn't want to do this shit. Like, I didn't want to do this. Like, this wasn't my calling. No. He never said what his calling was, but he's like, I didn't want to do this. Like, <laughs> he didn't this say was what the calling was. My calling. Mm. So they went ahead and did it, and, you know, they put some flavor on it. So you may have heard about them because they're most famously known for the drive in view, the drive through viewing. We might have even talked about them before. We, didn't we even probably, know. we didn't even know. Yeah. Talked about it years ago. Didn't even yeah. know it was them. Because I think I remember this happened. I said like a teller. Yes. And look at COVID. So made they, me eat crow. Exactly. So they got this drive-through viewing where they sit the body up and everything they like prop that. Prop it up, Jesus. And you know you can just view it <laughs> and then go on about go your on, way. You sign a book and Jesus. So now they didn't got this reality TV show. And it's brilliant. It is fucking amazing. You got Ryan. Who the owner? You got who mama. the daddy? Who you can tell had a life. You can tell he had a very mm-hmm. he was living fast, living that fast life. And we'll get to why when we talk about his daughters. Mm-hmm. And, you got, <laughs> and he got Mama Debbie, who do not play. You could tell she was one who smoked Marlboro lights. Mama Debbie, giving single mama realness, does the most without doing anything. <laughs> she does. The- she does do the most without doing it. Doing the most and doing the least at the same time. Doing the most and doing the least at the same time. You can tell Mama Debbie is the one who co-signed this. Yes. She the one with her name on it. Who who is the financial provider? Yeah, in yeah. All she was the one who put her credit down. Who didn't put her credit down? So you, our words, not hers. Exactly. Um, but I'm <laughs> assuming how I see her on TV. I'm assuming she will back it up. <laughs> but I'm also assuming because there's an episode when they went to go look at another property. It's like, yeah, I need her to sign off because I need her to co-sign this. Yeah. So you got that, and then you got Uncle Kevin. Uncle Kevin, who is in my head, y'all know my Uncle Junebug. Who is him? Mm-hmm. He is he, and they is we. Right. They're the same. This per Uncle Kevin. Y'all heard me talking about Uncle June Book years ago. That is literally my Uncle June Book. Fast talking. <laughs> barely can understand them. But when they get start start talking, and you be like, oh man, what's this nigga shut the hell up? When they start talking and it benefits you. You drawn in. You drawn in. Like they're a tornado. You're like literally wrapped up into their universe. And when they commit, they do it, right? They commit. Like they commit. Like when they do when they're good at something, mm-hmm. they're good at it. Cocaine white. <laughs> That's how he described. What was he describing a casket? Uh, no, he was describing a hearse. So yeah. there was this episode. I ain't gonna. I'm, I'm not trying to get. But there was this episode <laughs> where they need to go buy a new hearse. So uh, Ryan was like, "I'm gonna bring Kevin because Kevin can talk anybody out they damn draws." Yes. So then Kevin go. They talking to this man about it. Kevin and buttered them up. Then talk them down. I don't know. At least a few thousand. Uh, hundreds of th- a lot. Yeah, because they talk so quick. You don't know. What talk so about. fast. Yeah. These niggas go, um, go test drive the car. Yeah. Go to a barbecue shop. Yeah. Get barbecue all inside of the uh, the uh, inside the car. Yeah. Kevin then negotiates down the car. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then also, since they didn't been out test driving this car for the whole damn day. Yeah. Then negotiate gas and detailing inside the car. <laughs> And then seeing another, and then seeing another uh, white uh, hearse, and was like, "Ooh, this is clean. This is cocaine, cocaine white. white." I was like, "When, he, when Uncle Kevin's called <laughs> describe something as cocaine white, I literally almost <laughs> fell out the bed. <laughs> That's so old school. It is. Ooh, they in that cocaine white mink. <laughs> Ooh, come on, cocaine white. I said, "What?" And the thing is, soon as he said cocaine white, I knew exactly. He mean white out white. Like mm-hmm. I know exactly. Blue white. I knew exactly what he was talking about as soon as he said cocaine right. white. So you got Uncle Kevin. Yeah. So now you got Ryan's kids. Should we name this podcast Cocaine White and the Black Messiah? <laughs> <laughs> cocaine White like, and the Black Messiah. Because listen, 
Because y'all was mad about Judas. They said too much Judas, not enough Messiah. <laughs> too much Judas, not enough Messiah. Y'all, it's they story. So then you also have uh, his daughter. So you have Reagan and then Deja. Yeah. So Deja is his oldest daughter that he fi- recently found out that he had when she was 15 years old. Yes. So I think, what, she's like 24-ish, yeah, somewhere she's around 24, there? 24, 25. Uh, 24, 25, right. Mm-hmm. So, um, I love how transparent they were with yeah. him, too. Mm-hmm. So, like, he recently just found out, like, a few years ago, like, yeah. well, I wouldn't say a few years, but, like, 15 re- years ago. recently yeah. Yeah. that, you know. Second half of her life, basically. Right. That was his daughter. Yeah. Both so, of them. Yes. Mm. And then you have, I don't know, both of them. I think it was just Deja. No, no, no. I mean, oh, yeah. he and her. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't. Like, it wasn't a case where he knew he had a daughter and he just didn't do anything no. and vice versa. Like, mm. the mom was just like, yeah, I need to bring y'all together. Like, right. he didn't realize he had a daughter. No. And the daughter just assumed, I'm not sure what story the mother told the daughter, right. but, like, the father just wasn't around. Mm-hmm. Right? So, both of them, like, recently found out. Right. It wasn't like one knew and the other didn't. It was like on some, hey, you remember some things we used to do back in the day? Yeah. Like, yeah, I remember what some Yeah, yeah. How you going to do it now? Right. Look. Cocaine white? I might be down for something else. Cocaine white. And he's like, well, you got a daughter who looks just like you, who's 15 years old. It's like, what? Ooh. Look, why, why are you, why are you, why Listen, are you, I had tell me? go through something similar like that, but I think Sheesh. he knew. <laughs> why you know are you, you ain't talking about? Me? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> why you ain't tell me? Why you, why you? So it yeah. was like on that, right? So yeah. then he also has Reagan, who's like the youngest. I think she was like 18, 19. Yeah, yeah he's knew her. Uh, knew her and things of that sort. Who's like, I would think the one who's, she's hilarious. Reagan is low-key hilarious. And also Reagan is a little quicker yeah. than um the oldest daughter. The oldest daughter, her personality is just so sweet. Don't get me wrong, they're all smart, right? Mm-hmm. But you know, I'd be like, Chai ain't doing that. Like mm-hmm. Reagan's very much like not, the Reagan reminds me of the grandmother. Mm-hmm. And the oldest daughter reminds me of the father. Yeah. That's how I, that's how I would describe the personalities. So you got them in there, and then you also got Tavion, who's like the- I stand for Tavion, who is literally go ahead, Nim. This is your check in. I should have been checking it. You should have. But go ahead, you got it. You got Tavion. Oh, go God. ahead. K- no. K- I right, leave right here. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Be quiet. Tavion literally was like, ever since I've been a child, I want to be a mortician. <laughs> what? And then he told this sad story, like his mama passing, and he was at the funeral. And I was like, oh, he for real, for real. Yeah. And, like, he was like, it just brings me joy to take care of folks during some of the darkest times. Because I remember when I was young and the folks who took care of me. And, like, he's like, it's the greatest privilege to, you know, help people go on to be with their ancestors mm-hmm. and comfort the family in that time. And not only is he saying this, but... When I tell you he going to picking up these bodies, I almost called it Uncle Jumba, picking up these bodies with Uncle Kevin, he doing makeup, he trying to learn embalming, he hosting a family, he sweeping, mopping, he doing, he's literally want to learn every part. No, can we add one more thing to that? What? He's doing this and singing happily. Yes, cheerfully. Cheerfully, this nigga. Like every time they come to work, he always in the back, like you introduce, he went, we know him about what, episode two or three? Yeah. But you always see like him in the background doing work that's the other thing like you could tell like i'm sure next season they might be a little bit more aware uh-huh. but you could tell they almost didn't believe this shit was happening right <laughs> like they're like why those cameras here again like they would break the fourth wall to be mm-hmm. like why they should i go like you, it was so like raw that it was so it was so good yes and honestly just black the funeral home business in the black community is is just as big of a stakeholder as like the black church yes too. So there's just so much history when it comes to um, the, the funeral business, black people, access to middle class and wealth. I even seen how the mama, like someone came in and was like trying to do their funeral and they was like, I can't afford it. I don't know what I'm going to do. Right. Even how you see how she was working with that. She's like, mm-hmm. how about we do, do X, Y, and Z and we make this work. Right. That I know if it was not, if that wasn't a community based funeral home right or like they're connected to the community that right. that young man wouldn't have had the privilege to bury their family member with dignity right right like it was just the and even though it was on camera camera the way she did it gave just so much dignity to it to the process that it's just like this is why we do these things and even them right like they have deals where they was like they, they filmed a commercial honey and uncle kevin they got a deal where it's like 1800 full funeral Five hundred for like these, and at first I'm, I'm laughing, like, ah, ha, ha, but I was like, no, people need that. Right. Like funerals, the average funeral costs ten k. Yes, that's a lot of money, and if you don't have 
um, insurance or money set aside for this, a lot of folks just can't come up with 10K. Not so, like, you know, I know I'm kicking with Uncle Kevin and that, but that's, this is great that they're doing that because – you know, in the hood and the family, you might be able to scrounge together six hundred dollars. Between the family and the community, you can scrounge up a quick eighteen hundred, two thousand to go ahead and put your people to rest in a, in a um, dignified way, right? Without doing those type of things. So, like, it made me really pause and be like, they're doing a great service to this community, um, and, and, and doing that and being black. It just, it was just full circle to me. Yeah. It just, I don't know. It gave me gratitude, and I also want to watch too, so they can get more ratings, so they can get more money, so they can continue to grow their business, and hopefully they can have multiple ones, and also they can continue to help families who come. And I'm sure gonna need, need some help. Yeah. Right. Like so, I, that's another thing. Even if it ain't y'all thing, put it on in the background, get them some views. I don't know if they got social media, but go like them, like because we just need more. Uh, I don't know. We just need more of this. Because at first I was like, child, I don't know if I can do this. You know, I, you know, I, I love the Lord and my prayers, whenever I'm scared is Lord, get me there safely or get me safely to you. Either one I'm comfortable with, but yeah, nah, I didn't know how I was going to feel about the whole behind the scenes of the, and they show some of that. Yeah, they like they them. show like what it is. And they got the right one. Like uncle Kevin, like we're going to go pick up this body real quick. And then what well, uncle Kevin, Oh, this is a big joker. Yeah, Let me get this man, big joker help me out here. Help me. And then I'm Reagan. Uh, uh-uh, uh, uh, uh-uh. this man heavy. Come on. You, you, you got to get that joker in the bag. <laughs> that they show that right yeah. or even how he was talking about like the embalmment process and like like you know it's still light but how they slide some of that stuff into there mm-hmm. i'm like oh this or how is they a- doing the stitching and how they clothe them and shit like that yes yeah, so i was like oh like it's something to this um but i truly enjoyed it and i, I i'm gonna leave it there i enjoyed it what you what else you thought now it was a great show i, I, I think it's one thing <sighs> And it's only a few episodes. It's so only you a few episodes. It's only days. like 25 minutes long. Yeah. But I think it's it's something to having a reality TV show where bitches ain't fighting and fussing all day. Right. Time. Yeah. Niggas ain't cheating on niggas and yeah. people ain't fighting and shit. Yeah. Like our biggest and be problem. A black, and be a black our, reality TV show. Our biggest problem this season was figuring out what college Reagan going to go to. Mm-hmm. Because we'll, we'll let y'all figure that in. Yeah. Oh, also, Grandma was trying to do some date. Like, and that's how I saw Rod is. Like, the grandma was trying to do dating, and she got stood up on her date. Right. And, like, they could have pretend and did. Like, it was just so raw. It was good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Y'all go watch Buried by the Bernards yes. on Netflix. And then lastly, um, your motherfucking honors. The final I show. fell off. I couldn't do it Miami fell off. It was too triggering. Like, courts. I had to stop watching it. Well, this last episode brought everything together. Okay. You and spoiling then, it or no? no? Don't spoil it. Just no. Your honors with an S. Your honors with an S. The way that bad boy ended. Did it go to the very last second? To the very last minute, second hour. Did they hit a little Sopranos fade to black? Just about. <laughs> it's um, it's like a throat punch. That's how good it is. It's so good. It don't even need no season two, do it? It don't even need one. Because you get closure a, on everything. It's a standalone. You get closure on everything. Everything that's out there. Very few um, shows can do that. Mm-hmm. But you said you recommend it? Recommend it. Wow. Uh, especially since the see, the series finale is out. Okay. So watch it. If you haven't watched it, binge it. If you are watching, hang on to you. Mm-hmm. This all would have came out yesterday. Yeah. Okay. I want to get some pillows out. Yeah, let's get a little pillow talk. Um, before we get into the Judas and the Black Messiah, there's a couple of things we want to talk about first, y'all. Y'all heard about that flight attendant who tested positive with COVID and reportedly, allegedly, all the words, faked her adoption to avoid quarantine in Jamaica. Kalina. A scheme. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Nero says it's a scheme. I believe it's two sides. To, it's three sides to the story. So I think we got Kalina's side of the story. We got the authority side of the story. I'm looking for the third one, which is the truth. And I think it's somewhere in the middle. Now let, don't do that. <laughs> let me read the whole story. So according to the Jamaican Observer, the woman named Kalina Collier, um, I can't even get it out. Collier. Collier. Um, went as far as faking an abduction and posing videos on social media claiming to be in distress as she's waited out a mandatory 14-day quarantine in our hotel room. The Observer claimed um, Kalina used social media to plead 
to influencers and celebrities to convince them that she's been held against her will in Jamaica due to a false positive COVID-19 test results. Many Jamaican media outlets claim that Kalina tested positive twice when she was expected to depart the island, but she maintained the test results were wrong. Kalina arrived in Jamaica with a group of her friends on January 28th and was scheduled to depart on February 1st. On January 30th, however, um, Kalina did a antigen test that returned positive results and then took a second test an hour later that was negative. Because of the conflicting test results, the Ministry of Health and Wellness recommends she take the PCR test on February 2nd, which yielded a positive result. She was therefore ordered to stay in Jamaica to quarantine for 14 days. The Ocean Coral Spring Hotel, where Kalina was staying, offered to have her stay in quarantine period with no to, at no extra cost instead of transferring her um, to a government facility. But Kalina was reportedly extremely unhappy with being told she could not leave. Kalina then allegedly um, created a story about being kidnapped, held hostage, trafficked, and, uh, and threatened to destroy the resort's reputation in a series of videos that gained more than 100,000 views. The quote goes, for one, she's not missing. She is safe and being and is being extended all the courtesies of the hotel team. She received room service daily for all meals and was directed to contact the meet, the medical provider in the resort. Um, she uh, um, she also was in contact with the local public health representative, um, says the Ocean um, Coral Hotel rep. The J- J- Jamaican officials claim that Kalina reportedly refused to take down her videos, retract her allegations. Instead, she opted to remove the Instagram profile uh, uh, altogether. Only did uh, only did so after her employee, which is JetBlue, intervened. So that's the authority side of the story. Should I tell Kalina's side of the story? A scheme. Sure. First, you process that near, and then we're gonna say Kalina's side of the story. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. So Nyambi, I'm over here. Uh, I'm over here trying to figure out, you know, what the hell going on. So Nyambi's like, Niram, this story's so sad. I don't know if this is real or fake, but we need to see what's the hell going on, Niram. Like, we need to support this. So I'm like, all right, what's going on? So I see this shit. I'm seeing the videos. I'm seeing, seeing the screenshots. I'm seeing uh, celebrities talking about this woman possibly being. Uh, uh, allegedly abducted. I'm like, oh my god! Like as I'm reading this shit, I'm getting chills. Like, oh my god! Like black woman gone. We need to, we need to figure this shit out. Yeah. So should I tell Kalina's side? Yes. All right. So that's the the authorities, Jamaican. That's their side, right? Mm-hmm. This is Kalina's side. So this is what she saw. Um, and you know, all this stuff was on Instagram and all that, and they took it down. But get who got screenshots? Nyambi Ras is over here screenshotting. Yes. So these were the details that we had um, as of February, February 5th. This is chronological order. What happened? So, okay, pause. We told the authority side. Now we're going to tell the side that Kalina said happened. So it says Kalina has been in quarantine in Jamaica since Saturday, January 30th. She arrived in Jamaica with two of her friends. Saturday, January 30th, Kalina is told by authorities she is positive for COVID while her friends um, are told they are negative. They were not given physical test results. Kalina and her two friends are put in separate rooms with no keys so they cannot leave, no food, no water. Sunday, January 31st, authorities try to force Kalina to the hospital, even though she's still not proven to be sick. She refuses to go with uh, without friends or family and begins to suspect human trafficking. Monday, February 1st, Kalina's mother, Candace Page, arrives to Jamaica, but is not allowed to see Kalina due to the quarantine. Um, the hotel makes an offer to Kalina. Uh, I'm sorry, her two other friends to refund their room and let them go home if they sign an NDA. They agree and leave Jamaica the next day. This is where I got funny. So I was like, damn, your friends is going to leave? Something ain't adding up, right? That's why I was... Because I was like, this ain't... My friends ain't just going to leave and then sign an NDA and just leave. The fuck no? Uh, Let me continue the story. 
Then Tuesday, February 2nd, Kalina is retested for COVID. Thursday, February 4th, Kalina finds hidden cameras inside her hotel room above the bed and in the bathroom. Kalina posts her first IG live on Thursday night. The hour long video describes the events of her trip, shows proof of the cameras inside her room. Friday, February 5th, the live video has over 100K views. People begin calling the hotel an embassy. The situation has gone viral. Kalina then posts a second IG live video. Um, on Friday with physical test results in hand phys yeah, with physical test results in hand from February 2nd, the test results are negative. Kalina says she is coming home Saturday, February 6th, Kalina's Instagram and Facebook are deactivated Sunday, February 7th. Um, uh, the, the mother's Facebook deactivates. She's reported blocking users on Instagram who attempt to check on her later that day. The profile changes to private, um, and her booking number is deleted. Monday, February 8th, uh, the two friends post the same screenshot to both of their Instagrams, a text message from Kalina claiming that her and her mother are okay. Kalina's Instagram reactivates. She makes a te text post saying she's okay and asking folks to stop the rumors that she's missing. The posts make view viewers of the original live video suspicious that she's not in control of her Instagram. Amanda posts a series of stories saying that she's taught to Amanda, which is one of the friends, um, talks to Kalina on FaceTime daily. Her last post says, stop harassing and blaming me before it's deleted a few minutes later. Comments are turned off on Kalina's Instagram and her other friends are also turned off. Um, the other friend's cell phone number is acquired. Several attempts to call and verify their safety are made. Um, callers report different people answering the phone. Some say they don't know. Um, Kalina, sometimes a male will answer. Sometimes they will only hear them breathe. Ocean Coral Spring blocks comments from being made on their social media accounts. Contest is made with one of Kalina cousins. She's claimed she's not heard from Kalina since Friday and is worried. Still going. <laughs> Tuesday, February 9th, Kalina's cousin says she believes the friend claims that Kalina is okay. She hasn't spoke to Kalina directly and declines to communicate with us anymore. <laughs> Coral Ocean Coral Spring claims Kalina is no longer accepting calls and they will not connect anyone to her room. Previously, they came. She was not available and not answering the phone. Now we have multiple teams and countless of individuals gathering and contacting authorities to get any reassurance we can regarding Kalina and Candace. Contact was made with Kalina's stepdad. Um, he was un air quote unaware, but is actively pursuing the situation. They waiting for an update. All police stations have been contacted at this point. Three reports have been made that um, this person is aware of and they're waiting for an update. Those are the two sides of the story. I can see where some of these things overlap. What in the world, y'all? What in the world? Turn What in the Judas and the Black Messiah what is going, is going on, on here? On? What in... I do believe um, that there's three sides. I, we've heard the authority side. We've heard Kalina's or the people who are close to Kalina's side of the story. Um, and I'm waiting somewhere in the middle to talk the truth. Do I believe she probably didn't want to be quarantined and she probably stuck with that? Yeah. Do I believe they was talking real loud and probably crazy down in Jamaica? Yeah. Niren, what is your thoughts on all of this? My mouth is wide open. Don't it need I don't, to be... This need to be a lifetime movie. Either way, it's either still way, a... Scheme, no, a scheme. Like, it's, it's, it's a scheme. Set up for him to come. Either says you who was lying about it is a scheme, but even the, if that story she created needs to be written in script. Cause let me tell you, as I was reading the shit, it gave me chills. Yes, cause it's like, wait, sister, they're talking about now she just just deactivated, now she gone. Who got her phone? That needs to be a lifetime movie. What was that thing they had on BET where they turn in what you call it? Um, what's it called when they like songs? Oh, tales. Like I feel like that's what this need to be. When they start turning rap songs into uh, like no novellas. Yeah, I think this need to be a novella. Or what is that something else? This need to be a Law & Order episode. Can Law & Order Special Victim use... Y'all mark my fucking words. Law & Order Special Victim use is going to do this. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. Law & Order is going to do this as an episode. You know they come on the beginning of the whatchamacallit? Yeah. These are just fictional accounts. Yes. F fictional my ass. And the person ain't going to be Kalina. It's just going to be like Kadia. It's yeah. going to be... You know, they don't really try to change the name. They don't. They change as little as possible. Don't this feel like a Law & Order episode or mm -hmm. a Lifetime movie that I have to watch? Y'all... And, and Niren was teasing talking about Believe Black Women. I don't care if this happened. We still believe black women. I don't care. 
I think everyone who was a part of this initially, because I was just reading with my mouth open, I think folks did the right thing. If somebody do come on Instagram talking about they hell captured and they need help, yeah, we need to go into fucking action. So I don't think even the people who participated in that, you did what you're supposed to do. Someone said they were in help. You believed them mm-hmm. and you figured it out. Yeah. I think such the westernized culture is like, now see, you done cry wolf. I ain't never going to help you again. Sometimes people cry wolf. Some people times make people make mistakes. Right. And listen, if somebody else come on that and say they done captured them in Jamaica, we better be calling a fucking embassy too. Yes. So that's how I feel about it. Because, you know, niggas be like, see, this is why, you know, people try to turn it on. That's why I don't be listening to whole tips on Instagram. No, niggas, you post together. If somebody tells me something going on, I'm going to take their word for it. Sometimes do you get some duds? Sometimes do you get Kalina? She's going to be a verb. Shh. Sometimes you get Kalina? Yes. But sometimes some real shit is going on. Okay? Oh, shit. I think she didn't release a statement. What? <laughs> I'm not following the story anymore after this, y'all. So don't expect updates. Oh, I'm sure this is going to go heavy. Thoughts, Nero? My God. It's a lot. It is a lot. I don't know what the fuck. Yes. <laughs> what the- I don't know what the fuck. The story alone was scary. Mm-hmm. And then now how this is unfolding is just like, this is a whole different level of bullshit and waste of people, time and resources. But it still surprised me that people just didn't, almost didn't start with this. Mm-hmm. Like the Jamaica and the hotel, but like, listen, this is what happened. No, but maybe that has to be private. And I don't the person know. Has I, to thought, I thought it was fishy when her friend, her two friends left who she came with left. If they said, if they signed the NDA, I, that was some that was some okay. bullshit right there. Yeah. That Cause yeah. like that was like a red flag, and I didn't know what the red flag was, but, but it just felt fucking fishy. Yeah, that this is going on. She's allegedly, you know, being a part of like sex trafficking. Her friends true. are there. She alluded. I don't think. Yeah, or like yeah. alluded to sex trafficking, yeah. being abducted, all this other stuff. Her friends are there, and they leave at the sign in the NDA. Yeah. For me, that didn't that didn't. Something, wait, Something wait. wasn't right. I didn't know what. Yeah. But I was like, oh, there ain't no real niggas because my niggas. When I left. Anybody I go on vacation with, even if I don't even fuck with you like that. We're going to be, on vacation we gonna be quarantined you, together. I'm quarantining too. We all going in together. Hey, hey, Nia tested positive and then he tested negative and he tested positive again. But you can go. You can go near him. If you sign this NDA, fuck I am. No, I'm standing right here with Nia then. Yeah, I would love to use this as a test. Let's get away from Kalina. Whatever Kalina mm-hmm. did, fine, fine, fine. We just want y'all to know up and out. People make mistakes, that's fine. But like, this is a lesson learned in like, who you rolling with? Your, mm-hmm. your friends in the protocol. Because low key, I was actually talking with Nia about this. I do think the protocol is going to be taking these COVID tests, even when we're beyond the point of people, the majority of people are vaccinated in America. I think to go on certain vacations, they're going to require COVID tests as you're coming and as you're leaving too. Mm-hmm. And this is going this story or this theme of you were good to come in, but you trying to leave out, but you negative, so now you got to stay longer. Right. It's gonna become more of a norm. Positive. And then, yeah, yes, I'm sorry, positive. So, like, how do you move in that space? And I agree. If we all come together, we all got to leave together. Right. Only way I'm leaving is as I'm getting on the plane. Your lawyer getting off, especially in a different country. And then her mama come, and the next thing and you know, her mama, mama shit stitched, Her mama social media shit start disappearing. And then the stepdaddy talking, talking about, about I'm I ain't underwear. heard nothing. I was like, what the fuck what is going on? Heard? What you mean you ain't heard nothing? Your wife gone in Jamaica. Like, I'm surprised he been like, I've been in contact with her. Everything's okay. Give my family space. It'll all be sent soon. Mm-hmm. Like, they didn't even get no mess like nothing. that. <laughs> but Nia said he got some friends that would do some stupid shit like that. <laughs> He would do some stupid shit like this. Nia was like, I know some people, not friends, I know some people who do some stupid shit like this who will go and make all this fuss and be like, I asked for privacy now. I was like, because I couldn't. Because that's the other thing. Like, if I cause all of this um, commotion mm-hmm. in the community, I at least got to come on and be like, I am okay. Look, you what you know, you hold up today's paper, mm-hmm. get on a scale, and show I'm back in New York. And then I think people would have backed off. Yeah. Again, I keep so sorry. I see sorry to keep going back to clean, but it's just like how people move. Everybody ain't cut from the same cloth this, this day. It's some crazy shit. But I still stand. If you got something going on, yeah, take your ass social media. You better say something. And we can't let Kalina discourage us if people are asking for help or needing help. I do think that's the appropriate protocol. We do need to come in. We do, and we do need it, it is appropriate to ask people questions. 
and where she at and why she ain't home. That Those are all appropriate questions. Now, what sis didn't do is come and swallow it and take the L. Mm-hmm. <sighs> it's a lot, ain't it? It is a lot. It, 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 and we just had to um, tell y'all about it. Um, as we continue in highlights in Black History Month, you know, I'm going to talk about Trump being acquitted. A scheme that Todd set up. <laughs> DJT, which we already, oh, we already knew we this knew. shit. We knew. This knew. motherfucker then got twice acquitted <laughs> by the fucking U.S. Senate. No responsibility. No accountability. Because he could not, because they could not get two thirds to say, yes, his ass should be arrested because of the punk ass. Republican. The former president, Donald Trump, second acquittal by the U.S. Senate proved enduring Prove the enduring power he holds over the Republican Party, which the results Saturday setting the dangerous precedent that even an autocratic leader who violates his oath in office can escape punishment if he bullies enough senators into standing with him. His win came after a feeble defense by his lawyers. Oh, it was horrible. Um, and that amounted to little more than gaslighting in a presentation of falsehoods. And it showed the fundamental power and imbalances that is part of Trump's legacy in Washington. For four years, he abused the office of the presidency without impute, impute. He made the founders' insistence on co-equal branches of the government look like a farce. And just so you know, Seven Republicans joined the 50 Democrat, Democrats to convict them, falling short of the 67 guilty that was needed. A scheme that Todd set up for him to come to you with the bullet. And even more, I didn't even realize that this is still six more than the senators that voted to convict him in 2020. A scheme so only that really Todd one set up. Republican had since this whole time. It's ridiculous. White supremacy reigns. And Donald Trump never thought about That's why he didn't give a fuck about the lawyer. He's going to send Mabel up there. <laughs> he didn't give a fuck who was his... Um, yeah, right, exactly. He didn't he, give a fuck because he, he knew. He, Mabel could have went up there and defended him. He knew. And just did tricks and got the ball. Because all he... And just use her paw to hit the... <laughs> and just use her paw to hit the clicker. That's some bullshit. So it's... Uh, what else you talking about? Fuck this shit, I'm out. Okay. I mean, honestly, I think that just led into the perfect segue for Judas and the Black Messiah. <laughs> it's false. No way. Not this time. I just think it's a segue. <laughs> because the movie, for the folks who don't know, <laughs> who've been sleeping under the rug, Judas and the Black Messiah, the movie focuses on um, the last year or so, the life of Fred Hampton, the chairman of the Panthers, Illinois chapter. He was only 21 when he was killed in 1969 by Chicago police during um, a raid on his apartment that was planned with the FBI. So the FBI, the police can go in and shoot people, do all these things. Fran Hampton, the black Messiah was a threat. So he had to be eliminated. And that's rightfully done. Mm -hmm. Donald J. Trump incites a riot, storms the Capitol. And he gets to go to Mar-a-Lago. A scheme. (laughs) And get two hundred thousand dollars, and likely be running for president again in about three years. A scheme that mm-hmm. Todd set and up. It's not. I don't say, it's not a scheme. Like I'm talking to her, and he will be running for president again. A scheme that Todd set up. You better hold tight, his ass. It, listen, he'll be back, just like the fucking Terminator. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Let's get on something that we really care about. Judas and the Black Messiah. Like I said, we told what it focused on. Whoever has not watched this. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. I mean, it's based on truth. I know, but still. (laughs) Before, yes, it surprised me how many people weren't familiar with Fred Hampton. Mm -hmm. And I had to step back and see my privilege in being in Detroit. In Detroit. In that Detroit, Cleveland, Chicago connect, mm-hmm. where can I have a transparent moment? Y'all don't go get on me, especially yes. folks from the Bay. Okay. My experience and connection with the Black Panther Park Party, and my knowledge is through like that Chicago chapter, is through like the Fed Fred Hamptons, mm-hmm. and not necessarily the Hueys 
in the Stokely, the Karma, it's not through the Oakland chapter. Mm -hmm. And I know that Oakland is the me mecca for Black Pantherhood. Right. But my familiar, yet yeah, familiar, yet yeah, familiarity. Yeah, familiarity. Help me! Oh my goodness! Familiarity. The Lord, I ain't gonna say nothing bad. I feel like you're trying to get me. Yeah, is more with that. Mm -hmm. So I was very familiar with Fred's story, but it's surprising how many folks weren't. I was right. like, of course, y'all don't know they done. Yeah. Shut up, Fred. Yes, that is a thing. And then also, it's surprising how many people didn't realize how young he was. Yes. I was like, he was a baby. Mm -hmm. Twenty one. Twenty one. He Good. could barely drink. Well, back then I think he could drink at eighteen, but. A baby, mm -hmm. shit in yellow, all of those things. Yeah. So I, I loved how it educated a segment of the population um, on his legacy, on the legacy of the Black Panthers in Chicago, or just the legacy of the Black Panthers in the Midwest, mm -hmm. um, because it was strong. It was strong in Chicago, it was strong in Detroit. There was a strong Ann Arbor chapter. Like It was super, super strong all, all the way there. Where do we want to start here? I'm not acting. Yes. Daniel Lakeith Dominique baby they said this award season we want all of it they we know y'all liked Emily in Paris <laughs> Emily in Paris was a bop Emily in Paris got nominated for all the fucking things I see which was this Everything. is not Judas and the Messiahs the super focused <laughs> Daniel Lakeith Dominique baby when I tell you they perform, we'll go down the list. We'll start with Daniel. When that black Brit changed that accent, he's talking about the Black Panthers. <laughs> when he start, <laughs> and then he had an interview and he was talking about I'm the governor. I said, wait a minute, he's not authentic. I can't trust him. That's acting. He's I actor. can't trust Daniel he's a, he's an actor. because I see him playing Fred and mm -hmm. giving Midwest black men. Then I see him on a panel and he's giving spot a tea <laughs> and I'm conflicted <laughs> because Kalina just lied to us. So I'm not sure if Daniel's lying to us. <laughs> then Nero was like, no, Naomi, he's just a good actor. He ain't lying. I said, okay. Then we got Lakeith who was on a borderline with the community playing who he should be playing. So well, Lakeith play awkward, misguided black man so well that I say, is he a awkward, misguided black man? <laughs> That's not for today, though. <laughs> I said, God, Lakeith have it down to the twitch in his eye. And it looked like he don't know if he want to cry or laugh because he's a misguided, awkward black man, awkward black man. Fuck. Then we got Dominique's. What ass? Whew. Actually, all the women. But when Dominique come on that camera and she got the full cheekbones and, and just looking like a normal black woman and I forgot what normal black women look like because of Instagram. A scheme. I said she looking like my auntie. She looking like me. <laughs> and, she, and, and she crying and she got the cheeks. And she got natural hair and she educated. <laughs> Jesus, it was beautiful. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean? You know Dominique was looking normal. <laughs> I ain't seen normal black woman in three years. <laughs> on the TV, on media, in my life, all the black women I surround myself with is normal. Mm -hmm. But you know, on the internets. On the internet. On, on the um television, modern on the media, movie, movie. Modern media and shit. Black women just look different. It just, I can't relate. I don't look like the girls out there. I don't, and I ain't going to tell you what that y'all mean by that. That ain't this episode. I'll tell you what I mean by that next, next episode oh. if y'all write me an email. Or send a voicemail, 508-784-1111. I'll unpack what one, that one, means. One, one. But it's been so long since I've just seen what a black woman Regular Dagla. looks like. And the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. I said, God, she's beautiful. We all know what you're talking about. I forgot Martin Sheen was even in the movie. I said, Martin Sheen in here. Yeah. So he J. Edgar. Yeah. Oh. And also, I'll give a shout out to that crooked ass FBI agent. That white man know how to play crooked white man so much. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. If you see this white man come in troubles us soon us brewing. I've never seen him play. All right, Mabel, I'm doing this review. I uh, uh, cut your mouth. 
I ain't never seen that white man play right. He ain't never been on the side with the Lord. He never been on the right side of history. He's never been on the right side with history, but he's another one. I'll give him a slight prop. When I tell you he played that so cal- cavalier, Daniel, Lakeith, Dominique, my Lord, give them all the awards. <laughs> Mira, what you got to say about the acting for Daniel, Lakeith, and Dominique? Who want to be a part of Black Panther Party? <laughs> Did you look us about the T.I. group and these phones? I said, what, what the f***? God damn. I told you. I keep telling y'all. Y'all think I be joking. The black Brits is taking That's all the black That's not this roads. episode either. Nero. Not on my watch. <laughs> no. We was watching some of the after show stuff. <laughs> not on my watch, Nero. When Lakeith was like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very excited to play uh, Fred Hampton. And Nero's like, no. Mm-hmm. Actually, you're going to play awkward. <laughs> <laughs> no, nigga. You're going to play O'Neal. You're going to play awkward <laughs> black man. Who flipped on the party? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> you're, gonna play, was like, you're gonna play the most hated character in this movie. Lakeith was like, "This is some bullshit." Um, I mean, I think Lakeith can carry it. I feel like that's just was the um. Now all is well with the community with us and Lakeith because he did say some off topic comments. Um, but since he's carried the weight of this character, I think we've forgiven him now. Lakeith was like, "This is some bullshit." It is some bullshit. <laughs> he's like, "I'm I'm very excited and honored to play Fred Hampton." They said, "No, no." You playing Judas? This him. <laughs> what? Why? Hit the Mabel the wild wild. Cry. <laughs> the niggas gonna be after me because you know we have a hard time separating the um, character from the actor. It's gonna take us at least a year exactly. to separate Lakeith. Lakeith is no longer from Get Out. You know no. that scene from Get Out. Everybody mm-hmm. kind of associate. He is now Judas. <laughs> Look, not even O'Neill. Judas. <laughs> Fucking Judas. He is the Judas. And for the babies who don't know, they associate O'Neal Judas because Judas flipped on Jesus. Right? I hope for the kids who ain't getting it, I ain't assuming everybody following the Bible. My God. Let's touch on another point that, honestly, I love the movie. I don't have any complaints. I plan on watching it numerous times. It's going in my black collection. It, it can do no wrong. I loved it. It is my thing. I love every time Daniel came on that screen. I loved of this movie mm-hmm. so i don't have many complaints but what we can do is unpack some of the thump pieces y'all did um a lot of y'all niggas said it was too much judas not enough messiah o'neill is thus the judas of the title and having the story unfold primarily from his perspective turned out to be a little bit of a dis- decision that y'all ain't like um as an outsider o'neill provide a natural point of entry it's kind of through his eyes where you witness the practice work in the back community through like the free medical clinics in the kids breakfast program i personally didn't have a problem with that though mm-hmm. and i think maybe i didn't have a problem with it because i was already i didn't come to this movie to get ramped up on the black panther no in their I didn't impact either. To the community, like I've already processed that, like I've already like digested that. But I guess if you coming in and you were expecting to learn more about the Black Panther movement or maybe Fred's story um, of like childhood and how he and how he got into Black Panthers, because I think that it's but he has a bio a book too, so I recommend y'all read that. I think it's called The Killing of Fred Hampton. Mm -hmm. Hampton, I read it a long, long time ago. That breaks down like what was his turning points to get in the Black Panther movement. Yes, I can see why you said that, but I just thought it was literally. I thought this movie, instead of the biopic of Fred Hampton, I seen this as an examination of systematic racism in America and how it plays out, Mm. right? Because I also believe, you know, and I'm not trying to cake for O'Neill too much, but he was a victim of the same system that Fred Hampton and the Black Panthers and Black people were a part of of too, right? Like he Ah. didn't... And it was just so hard watching his stuff because they had like the interviews from I on a prize where, mm-hmm. you know, it still wasn't that connection of like the impact that he made because he was like, yeah, I know I was a part of that. But like I stayed with the Black Panthers and I did all these good things and the Black Panthers are a good or but it's just like you, you helped. Right. You lead. helped dismantle it. Yeah. You run the lion into the the, the cub then. Right. Like mm-hmm. you, you, you helped that. You can see it was a disconnect there. But systematic oppression like it's a system in place that had that man like that black man should not have to choose between his freedom and sacrificing the black panther movement in or another black man's life Mm -hmm. that's wrong yeah that is where the criminality is like that is where the frustration should be pointed at then nah you know don't get wrong there should be responsibility and accountability for o'neill right and he does have place pieces that he played into it but to a certain point once you're in the cog in the system yeah they gonna push your ass through, well, he, he, right? He, like he, if it wasn't yeah. if it wouldn't have been him, it would have been somebody else. It would have been another black man. Like, and, and what you know, and what we, 
came to find out there was multiple Many. black people that were spies because this is what they are spies yeah. in yeah. the black Panther party the noi all of them, uh, all of them. All of SNCC. black love matters i'm sorry not black lives <laughs> black lives like they are spies the spies have been there too who work for so the fbi <laughs> who is plotting on your our downfall yes point black period yes so I was, I think that's why my weight wasn't so heavy on Anil mm-hmm. because I know he only had really control on the small portion of that. Yeah. And I like also he think, really only had, cause they were going to send that man under the jail. And I also yeah. think that, you know, for one of my electives in college, I, I took a black Panther party. I think I did too. Yeah. We took yeah. someone in the same class. Together. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't think we took it together. I think we took the same professor cause I, yes. I think I put you on. So shout out to him. I was about to because, give him a shout out, but y'all be tracking people. But shout out to him <laughs> because he was an old school Kappa. Yeah. And a black Panther. Panther. God, the privilege. He was a Kappa and a black Panther. He, and you can tell. You can tell both of them. Yes. That nigga From wore the that. came to the beret. That nigga wore that crimson beret every time he came <laughs> in. No, he's not. He was fly though. He was fly. Yeah. So like I've 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 first, been around this right. First story counts. Yeah. I've been around this. I've been around it in he's the. He's met lie. them. Like he. Yeah. He's, yeah. Yeah. I'm about to get. I've on been the around the Black Panthers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've been around Great benefits of these programs. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been around all of this. So like to hear about this, I wasn't surprised, but I also think I had the privilege. Yeah, it's a privilege. To, to get this knowledge and get this learning where some of the some of the some of y'all are just learning this shit now. or even having the privilege from being from detroit like i still like i know our professors and stuff a lot of our professors of africana studies were black panthers but it's like people in my neighborhood yeah who like were black panthers, black panthers. like who are like old like in their 50s and 60s mm-hmm. like yeah i was in the black panther detroit chapter i was in the black panther Ann arbor chapter like literally or yeah been a part of like a greek organization who was heavily affiliated with with that yeah so they might not been directly a Black Panther, but they would have been a a, a, a Prince Hall Masonic who yes. been a part of it. A yes. old school Kuyu, a old yeah. school Alpha. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Rotary Club. Yeah. All of that who participated in that yes. in the movement where they can share their first account of it. And I love the way Fred Hampton and they they touched a little on in the movie of how the brilliance in um, Fred Hampton and especially the Chicago chapter they were one of the first folks who really started doing that united front stuff. Mm-hmm. Right? That like not, that, not, not not that everyone didn't, right? Every, that, the still core values of Black Panther but he was one of the first or I should say Chicago was really one of the hotbeds in getting that started on like bringing everyone together and we're just we just were saying the black organization but from the movies you can see he got the po white people he got the puerto ricans um he got all these groups who normally like wouldn't be associated together and brought them together all the gangs the disciples the young lords like where where there's these different factions of basically community support is Mm -hmm. what they are and instead of having them in their own bubbles protecting their own block they own two block radius if we all to come together you can have the whole city and that's something that he in the chicago chapter really was big about and that's what the fbi was real scared about because they was like wait not only is he gathering all the negroes he getting the po whites he get the puerto ricans to get like they're getting all they're getting the Asians. And mm-hmm. I mean that's what started out here in Oakland. And that's why the Black Power and the Yellow Power movement came together, right? Because no longer it was just the Black Panthers and the Yellow Power Power movement. When you've seen one, you've seen the other now. Right. And that's why they like, whoa, what whoa, 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 whoa. It's too much shit. It's too much power going on here. Right. right? Like we can't be having all them coming together talking about this injustice. And especially during that time, right, as we're getting off like the getting into like the Cold War and thing and this idea of communism, because we were like a capitalist country, like, like that's what they were preaching to yes. say the system is fucked up. And the system right. Is they they up. weren't saying let's adjust the system. They were saying fuck the system overturn it all together is trash let's start over right and that was the threat right and i think it's one of the quotes even in the movies where like you know racism can't fight racism solidarity has to capitalism can't fight capitalism um socialism, socialism does right and you know americans especially rich americans don't want to hear none about no socialism sure don't because that adjusts the power so it was just that that brilliance um in having that then i reflect on to like man they did this at 20 yes 20 with no social media <laughs> what just books yeah just learnings readings of uh, fan like just just the readings right of philosophers 
and thought leaders in the field. So I thought it was super beautiful. But what did you think about the movie? I, I got a little off track. Did you think it was too much Judas, not enough Messiah? No. Um, I thought it was a different way to tell a story. I think it was a different way to tell a story. You know, yeah. when you... As... I think since I'm like in book writing mode, right? I, I've I've kind of seen that it, it it's just multiple ways to tell a story. Period. You can tell it from Fred Hampton's side. You can also tell it from uh, a third party side, or you can also tell it from the antagonist side. Yeah. And I think they decided to tell it from the antagonist side. Yeah. To also, I guess you know, and no one knows Lucas Brothers too. Yeah. A to humanize him because to say like he, he does was need some fu- humanization. He was in a fucked up situation. He ended up committing suicide. Yeah, he did. Um, but B, I think to show like that outside perspective of someone who's like trying to infiltrate and like the shit they have to go through to to get there. It's yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. I think it's interesting because A is a learning point. It like this is a, another data point. Yeah. I think for me when I'm like trying to figure out who do I bring in my circle mm. to start thinking about well, if this is what got going on, like now I need to look at my inner circle when it comes to Yes. Who's doing what? Who's doing what dirt? Who's yeah. being caught up in anything? I need to know more about yes. who these people are. Yeah. So I make sure I don't get caught up. Yes. Absolutely. So I, I took it more of that way, but I yeah. think it was a great movie. And yeah. I don't think it was too much Judas. Judas. I don't think, it, you know, I think it was I mean, just another Judas way. in the title. Yes. Judas was the first name. Yes. It ain't say Black Messiah and no. Judas. It's it's a Judas. Judas and the Black Messiah. So that should let you know, like Judas is going to be the lead. Yeah. And Judas is going to do, do the shit. Judas going to do this. Yeah. And also I take in consideration the creators, which are the Lucas brothers, which mm-hmm. are traditionally comedians. And they're, they're also awkward black men. I would, and, and all due respect, awkward mm-hmm. black men. I think we're starting to use the word awkward as a, it's a positive thing. It's right. a compliment now. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't imagine they would do things linearly. Like that would be against their brand right. to just come in and just tell the Fred Hampton story and just call it a day. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see without the, but oh. also think, I, I don't think that would have sold mm. like on some real shit. Yeah. I don't think just telling the Fred Hampton story where there's and already been like documentaries, you got this. eyes on the prize. Yeah. This thing has been told multiple times Yeah, and this modern day media. I don't think it would have been sold that True. way. True. Truthfully. Yeah. I don't think that would have been sold. So to come with it at a different angle and yeah. say, Hey, we're going to tell it from this man's point of view. Mm-hmm. Like when, and, when you're in these, like when you're in these meetings, like they want to know like what's interesting. I mean, like what's even exciting. drawing the the connection between Judas and like the O'Neill and the Messiah and God, like I just even like that play on words. Mm-hmm. That was something to me. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I, I agree. I like it too. Um, let's see something else y'all was talking about. Um, the whole Teps also was upset that this became a motion, major motion picture, but you know, Fred Hampton Jr. and them, they trying to get the house saved. Um, I think it's the Fred Hampton house. Mm-hmm. Um, they're trying to like save it or they need to go fund me or something. And it was like, why do they need to go fund me in this is big ass movie? I was like, listen, you niggas know how to steal a joy, don't you? I mean, I looked at the go. I think it's her past. So mm-hmm. he's reached the point like and everything. Cause at first I was like, let me go put my 20 up. Yeah. Um, right when I was gonna put my 20 up, I think he surpassed it by like a million dollars, which mm-hmm. is great. But I was like, I hear you. Let me acknowledge what that comes into place. Yeah. And then also like, what you want the Lucas brothers to like their goal was to bring the story to the forefront, to get more exposure to then provide more resources. Yes. That's how I seen that chain of command. But again, I just want to acknowledge all the thump pieces and hotels. But the thing we can't solve it there's, all. there's this thing in marketing that's called the ATM method. It's oh, called tell us, man. attention to monetize. Yeah. So there's people out here and it's just, it's just tactic just like everything else yeah. that you Bring attention to something. To monetize. Yeah. To monetize thought, yeah. other things around it, right? Yes. That's what I was hoping. So was you think about, you know, I think a simple example is like LeBron James. Like, how people know him is from a nigga putting a ball in the in goal. Yeah. In Period. Yeah. But he's monetized that with so many other things. So I think when it comes to all these fucking think pieces, it's like, do you not know, like, this is another way to monetize the goal and was to fun. bring more attention yeah so by bringing attention to it then fred hampton jr could then come up and say hey we trying to save this house yes so now since you got the attention you got the eyeballs now you can monetize the shit he wanted more monetize. than they did before then they if they just would have gave them money exactly yeah so i think that's the thing right oh, i agree is mm-hmm. that 
a lot of people come up with this shit like, ah, oh, this should have been that. But the thing is, is that sometimes you got to have this media shit. Like sometimes you got to go through this media shit yeah. in order to correct, course result. correct yeah. the shit afterwards. Mm-hmm. See you, Nero. Yeah, I, I didn't feel that. a certain. I mean, you yeah. put it more eloquently than I did, but mm-hmm. I didn't feel a certain type of way because I was like, "Oh, well, they're supposed to the goal, and they reach. They're doing much more than they would if someone just gave them the money they initially wanted." Right. So that's why I didn't have much about it. Last piece of this: the romance. Ooh, stuff did slow down a little bit with the romance between Hampton and the other Panther, Th- um, Deborah Johnson, who played uh, by Dominique, my girl. I just enjoyed their scenes together. I just Mm -hmm. enjoy the intimate moments between them two. I also enjoyed how they, and often sometimes when it comes to like this era of film, they don't highlight the impact that black woman has had on it. I I loved how they did center women when appropriate in this movie, be it through their romance of how Fred truly looked like he fell in love with Deborah because of her intelligence, right? Mm-hmm. Like because of the way she moves, because of the way for her ability to call him out, right? For him, for her ability to help him zoom out and see the bigger picture, right? For her, her, her to call him on her shit. I also appreciate it. Even in some of the quicker scenes where Fran Hampton, where old Judas trying to push up on a woman when he was like, there are comrades, there's our peers. You don't talk to them saucy. Mm-hmm. Right. And then on the flip side was sis, who was the other Panther who, when the shootout was happening, Sis was on the front lines too. Yes. <laughs> right? Like she clocking them back and picking up the nine and doing all the work as the man did. So I just appreciated how women were highlighted in this movie, how they were acknowledged, how they weren't held to be something fragile, something that's put aside. Um, I just love how they're on the forefront. But more than anything, I truly did love the romance and the intimacy um, that was highlighted between um, Fred and, and Deborah. Right, mm-hmm. like even her talk after him, she's like, "Yeah, you giving these speeches talking about you ain't scared to die. I ain't gonna scared to die tonight." She said, "But I'm have I got a baby? Mm-hmm. Like wh- I'm scared for you to die. Like you know, like this those things." Yeah. I love how they unpacked it, and I love also how they unpacked it via poetry. Y'all know spoken word ain't my my favorite, um, but I did process it in this movie, and I thought it was just beautiful and how they talk to each other. Right. Or I even love how Fred changed his energy around her. Mm-hmm. Right. Like when he out on the, when he a show pony, he show pony. But when her, it was this softness, this tenderness, right. That, that came out that I was like, Oh yeah, that was something just super beautiful to see. Were you going to say something about that near? No, I, I forgot. Oh, what you I didn't think say. the beauty, it wasn't no beauty in the song. No, it was some beauty in it, but I forgot what I was going to say. So I was going to let you continue. Why didn't you just cut me off? Why didn't you just jump in? <laughs> because I like, I like when people finish their full thoughts. Fuck that. I'm just <laughs> but it, it was it was some beauty in there and my heart did hurt um again knowing how spoiler alert he dies um but the way in which he dies and how much of a close proximity she was to him mm-hmm. and even in interviews they had her where she was recounting the situation how she was scared to look back because she knew he was dead and yeah. she did not want to remember him like dead in that pool of blood and doing all of that and still with child like i don't i don't know how she did that yeah and then still going to continue to work with the black panthers like i would just need a complete break i'm like oh i'm i'm just done my only goal in life is just raise my child but sh- she still persevered through still telling his story still keeping his legacy alive it's just whew. y'all thought hamilton was something honey right. they need to do this fred hampton where um what's his name at what's the, who the one who did hamilton uh manuel yeah manuel we need us a play on this Cause y'all know Eliza kept Hamilton legacy alive. Child, look what Deborah done did for him. Child, the orphanage. Shout out to the Hamilton people. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know about the orphanage in that final. I remember. The you orphanage. know that final scene when she like, oh! Deborah needed that. Do you know Hamilton? Yes. No mind. Okay, I'm going too deep. I'm a nerd. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it too. It was I plan on watching it again. I it wasn't it a Thanksgiving. Well. I mean, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. It wasn't a. Um, a black love movie. No. It wasn't no Valentine's Day movie. Yeah, I don't it, know why they put that on Black Love Day, but okay. <laughs> Jesus. It wasn't Jesus. a Black Love Day movie. But. That could have came out on President's Day. <laughs> they could have gave us Black Love. <laughs> but speaking of these 13 days of Black Love and Black Love Day, Nero, what's your thoughts? I'll let you jump in. Wrapping up 13 days of Black Love and reflecting on our Black Love Day. Um, shout out to all y'all. And mm-hmm. all of y'all representing for Black Love Day. And, you know, for everybody who was their first year, their second year, their third year, you know, this is something, a legacy to to keep going, right? 
and to practice black love as much as you can. Yep. Um, I enjoyed it. I, I think, you know, we had a good time. I think me and you just chilled out. You know, we, we, we talked, we, you know, got, got in line. We got, not got in line, but like mm-hmm. talked and rebuild and connect. <laughs> was, what you going to say we did? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Not that. Episode. Yeah. What you think? <laughs> no, I'm in line with it too. Like, thank you all, honestly, for all the supporters and the folks who engaged and repost and showed us y'all black love. Mm-hmm. It's just something special about taking the time to do it. it honestly, it made um, Valentine's or the M feel a lot less lower lift and not as intense. Like it just, I don't know. Like it, it felt different to me this year and I'm grateful for it. And actually I'm not, I know why it's COVID civil mm-hmm. unrest, new president, Judas and the black Messiah, yeah. Kalina, uh, gorilla glue. Like it's just been so much going on and it was just nice just to have like just a nice intimate moment just yeah. to be and just to, to just not to always be with the shits. Yeah. Like, damn, like sometimes can we not be with the shits? Yes. And I agree. Just just that alone was great. Um, but I know we still got the rest of Black History Month. But as y'all know, don't be coming here looking for no old news. We ain't doing that. We are celebrating Black joy. We're celebrating current Black history. And just continue to take care of yourself throughout this time. Like, that's the biggest takeaway that I got from this Black Love Day is being really in tune with yourself and having the self-awareness of what you need and when and just leaning into it more than ever before. Facts. All right. Here? Yes, as always, to submit your Black Love story, go to blacklovematters.com. To submit a question for Kitchen Table Talk, shoot us an email, blacklovematters at gmail.com. Remember, that's black with no K. And to leave a comment about anything we talked about, head on over to that website. We got that SoundCloud, and we got that voicemail at 508-784-1111. Once again, that's 508-784-1111. Talk to y'all later. Remember, love, love is ever evolving. evolving. Peace. Peace.